I am back where I am happy, out on a small stream, floating, and I'm gonna make a big float, 10 mile float. Tonight, camping, fishing all night, and then tomorrow I'm gonna do some daytime flyhead fishing, and hopefully catch one. I don't know, we're kind of in that weird transition stage where you got like the spawn, and then you got some post-spawn fish, and I don't know. The water conditions are really nice for kayaking, and the weather's beautiful, and I just want to be outside. So, here we are. Let's go. I did bring my chips. So they're multi-purpose. They block out the sun to improve my videography skills, as well as provide me with a healthy, balanced diet. Yeah, these chips are really good. First spot of the evening, no structure, just a drop off. Well, I guess there's technically structure. There's some boulders down there, but nothing like super duper flat heady. But anytime there's a drop off, I mean, those fish set up there sometimes. And I mean, I about guarantee you there's some flatheads here somewhere, but to be able to pick up exactly where they're at, it's gonna be tough, but gotta try it. 10 minutes, I mean, what's 10 minutes? Mesquite barbecue. Highly recommend it. Spot number two. Spot number three. Spot five. Five. Need to get camp set up. What I'm going to look for is depth in proximity to shore where I can cast to as well as reduce current. And generally put all those things together and you fish a whole night. That's going to equal some flathead action of some sorts, you know, whether you capitalize on it, that's up to you, but in your abilities, I guess. But hey, you screw it up, it's motivation to get better, at least that's how I look at it, but what do I know? Well, this is a great looking fishing location, not the best looking camping location. Get them in conjunction is tough sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I got this little divot here, it looks nice and muddy, and I'm gonna toss my crap up there, set my tent up up there. Alrighty, time to get camp set up. Sure it's pretty out here at least. So I'm gonna sit there. My sleeping area is here. The rods are there and down there. There's definitely a tripping hazard of some sort, but unfortunately with the terrain, I'm going to have to rely on my cat-like reflexes. Being able to get around this thing if I get a bite. There's a helicopter trying to find my fishing spots. It's getting out of hand. So I'm not like super duper duper excited and it like don't really expect a whole lot because pretty much in the spawn, I think it's a late spawn. It's late everything this year, which is okay. But even more than that, the river's dropping. So I mean, the spawn plays a part, but I'm a believer that moon phase and river conditions are more important than everything else. So, not expecting much, but you can't catch them if you don't fish for them. I mean, you could. You can't catch them if you don't fish. That should, that's probably more accurate. I'm going to kick back and relax and turn you guys back on when there's action, if there's action. Otherwise, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. We may have some live action. I do not think this is a flyhead, sadly. That was a beaver. I hate beavers, but sadly, beavers and flyheads kind of go hand in hand. My bait's probably dead as a hammer. But I'll leave that down there for a little bit to see if I can catch him and remove him from this area. So, uh, keep rolling, buddy. Oh, I got him. <laughs> this is not a turtle. Yeah, big head shakes. Oh, he's a good one. I can see him. Holy crap. He's stuck on that log. I can see him. Oh, there he goes. Oh, you probably can't see him yet. Yes, much bigger 
Great fight. <laughs> awesome fight. He ate a green sunfish, in case you're wondering. He was hooked very well. Right in the corner. Definitely gonna have to check that leader. Cause he was all up in the gunk. Ooh! Nice and bright. Nice and chubby. And I'm nice and happy. <laughs> this is dang nice fish. Short, fat, squat, and heavy. I like them when they're heavy. I'm shaking. I expected a turtle. This is not a turtle. <laughs> this is my favorite. All right. Gonna let this dude go. All right, bud. You had just had a pretty traumatic experience. Oh, peace. I love watching them swim away. Retied my leader. Looks like I paid for that flathead and blood. Call that an even trade though, considering I just shoved that 10 out hook right in the corner of his mouth. I think I'll make that trade every time. Unless I get like a flesh eating bacteria infection. And I guess I'd probably change my mind. I'm shaking because that was exciting. He's all up in some gunk. Oh, he's way better than I thought. Cool spawning scars on him. Wait till you see those on his noggin. Yee. Whoa, mud. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know if it's just me or if it's anyone else, but when I wake up, <laughs> you just burp a bunch of water. When I wake up, I have like no sense of balance or coordination. Not that I have very much balance or coordination before I wake up but it's even worse then, so. Yeah, this dude woke me up, heard that zzz, when he sucked in that bullhead. You're pretty riled up for a flathead. You're they're more chill than that. But zzz, when he sucked in the bullhead, then he started rolling. And uh, yeah, here we are. So, I'm gonna let him go. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. All right. Peace. Bro. Morning. Sure is pretty out. I mean, just check out those views. I'm kind of wore out. This is the fish kept interrupting my sleep, but I get cleaned up because I still need to catch some fish. But it's cold, and I kind of want to stay in the sleeping bag. Uh, we'll see what happens. <coughs> yeah, I forgot my allergy. Nose stuff. But I got seven miles left in the float, so I'm gonna hit a bunch of spots during the day. And the thing with daytime spots, it, it's all about quantity. It's wash, rinse, repeat. Uh, I'm probably gonna hit 24 to 36 different tie-off spots on the way down there, and I'm hoping that equals one bite. Yeah, one bite. If anything more than that. It's a really good day, but if I get one bite on the way down there, I'll be happy, and then it's just up to me to capitalize. Got to hook them, got to get them out of the gunk, got to get them in the kayak. That's the fun part. If any of you are wondering about the hat, the hat I had to retire old Krusty, but I gave him a, a proper, proper ceremony before I put him away. This this hat right here. Can't complain. First day of war, Cubs won by one run. Craig Kimball came in and got the save. And then, this is first time of war fishing. Got the, those two flatheads last night. And if I get one more today, it's sealed. This is definitely a lucky hat. But hey, it's Cubs hat. It's what, it's what winners wear. Anyway, I'm going to get floating. Let's go. Oh, look snagged already. Hopefully I'm able to break this without breaking off my anchor point. You know, losing terminal doesn't hurt quite as bad as losing baits. And I got a long ways to go. And I have time. But sometimes you just run low on bait. Well, we have the breakfast of champions. We have cold potatoes, onions, they're cooked, just for the record. 
And then, some chicken breast. You need your energy when that big flathead hits. Balanced diet is key to success. Most people don't realize that. It's the little things. Apparently the channel cats like raging against the machine and sunfish because they just got whacked. Could be a two pound channel, could be a 52 pound flathead. Hard to tell at this point. We're up to a real fish. He just tagged it and he is heavy. Staying down, pulled off about 10 yards of drag. He hardly move it. Ooh. Yeah, real, real nice fish. Got my thumb on the spool because he is still pulling drag with every freaking head shake. Wow, this is huge. Holy crap. Sorry, camera. I will be in line when I can. Stood up so I could get extra leverage, keep them up high, hopefully out of the sticks, like right there. Stay out of them. My legs are shaking like a leaf. Oh, he throttled it. Just trying to wear him down at this point in time. Yeah. He is monster. Freaking monster. Oh, oh my. Oh, I'm shaking. This thing is huge. Holy crap. I have no idea how big. Oh, come on. Oh my God. 70, 60, 70. He's giant, all scarred up from the spawn. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Oh my god, look at the head on that thing. 50, 60. Maybe he just got a big head. He's got me all excited. He is mondo. back here. Holy crap. Oh I was not expecting this, but when are you ever? Oh, huge. One hell of a fight too. Man, he's all, or she, I think it's a he, all messed up from spawning. Over here. The longer I dig around, <laughs> he was right there. Every bit of 50. Maybe not 60, maybe not 70, but every bit of 50. Clean break, probably from rubbing me on brush. Right at the side of the boat. Fresh leader. Fresh leader, good knot, everything. Clean break. Lose one, you rig one. Words of Captain Quint. It's gonna be a while before I can forget that fish. And by a while, I mean it's probably, probably never gonna forget that fish. Just another spot like any other. And he was there. You could say bump up to heavier line. The problem is when you're in a kayak, if you're using 60 or 80, this is 50, 
it's such a pain in the butt to break snags that you become so much less efficient and you don't fish as many spots and in the long run you uh, don't catch as many fish because it takes so long to break off snags because you snag all the time. I'm still pretty upset about that because that fight played out the best possible scenario could have. He hit it, went straight to open water, bought him in pretty open water, got him to the kayak, bought him on the open water side, and was just getting ready to land him and pop gun. Mega freaking heartache. I don't know. That one will be a tough one to shake off. It's a good thing I was wearing these sunglasses when I lost that fish or you would have saw a grown man shed a tear. Not that there's anything wrong with a grown man shedding a tear. It's just, it was embarrassing enough already to lose that fish and I didn't need anything else on my plate. Got a storm rolling through. It'll be here in about an hour. I got about an hour straight paddle back to my truck. Unfortunately, this is gonna be it for me. I love making these videos. Making these videos is a lot of fun. I like making all kinds of stuff. I like I build my own fishing rods, a lot of them. I do a little carpentry work on the woodworking on the side, not for business, but like hobby. And it just makes sense that you know, like making videos is a whole lot of fun. So I'd make them whether anybody watched or not. But the fact that you you do, that just makes it even more fun, even more cool. So. I appreciate it more than I really can put into words. Right now words are hard. I just sheer depression. But so thank you. Thank you to everybody who watches these. I hope the stuff I share on here helps bump your odds of catching a, a big boy and when you hook him I hope you catch him. I hope you don't lose him right at the kayak like I did. So, thanks for watching. Hope you catch and land a giant.